I shake the dust off my feet. I'm done. I give up. I give up. The whole thing, everything is messed up. Everything is messed up, guys. You got pedophiles in the Vatican and the Catholic Church. Literally a network of pedophiles. Network of pedophiles. And it's not just in America. It's in Italy. It's in Argentina. It's in Mexico. It's in Chile. It's in Poland. It's in everywhere you go. It's there. And they say, oh, you should go to church. Theodore needs to go to church. He needs to go to church. So I went to church. I went to church for six years, almost six years. Went to mass loyally, with dedication, with consistency. If I missed the mass, I went to confession. I told the priest my sin. I told the priest what sins I did. I told the priest that I missed mass. I told the priest that I was lazy. I wasn't rebellious. I wasn't rebellious. I didn't go around with the, some crazy plan of being another Martin Luther. I didn't go around saying I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to overtake the pope or something. I defended the pope. I debated Protestants. I stood up to the heretics. I faced the apostates. I did all sorts of stuff. I wrote entire articles defending the church. I wrote an entire book defending the church. And you know what? I wish I never wrote it. I spent five years, six years of my life writing that book. I wish I never wrote it. Honest to God, if I could take it all back, I would have I would have just stopped after the second book. I wrote a good book called In Satan's Footsteps. It's a great book. I wrote a second book called For God or for Tyranny, which is another excellent book. I love that book. And I, and I wrote it. I wrote both of those books with so much passion, so much dedication, so much inspiration. I wrote those books. And then I, I pushed myself like five or six years to write a book about Catholicism and the, the history of the church and all that stuff. I spent so many years reading various books and all this stuff, and I wish I never wrote it. People told me to go to church. People said that I should go to church, and I did. People said that I should have fellowship, and I tried. And you know one thing I realized fairly quickly about Catholics? I realized very quickly that Catholics are extremely antisocial they don't talk to people they don't talk to people catholics don't talk to people they're very cliquish they are very reserved and they're not very warm they don't give a warm welcome to the newcomer. And it's not just the lay people who are this way. The Catholic priests are this way. Catholic priests are not very warm in their welcoming either. They're only warm when they're trying to sexually prey on you. <sighs> and they just don't talk to you. Catholics don't talk to you. You try to talk to them, they're like, hi, uh, yeah, I don't know, uh. They don't talk to you. Evangelicals, very talkative. You walk into an evangelical church. Hi, how are you doing? I haven't seen you here before. Are you new here? Wow, have a seat. Have a coffee. Have a donut. Let's talk. Let's have dinner after service. Wow. You can actually have a social circle. You can actually have fellowship with evangelicals. Non-denominational evangelicals are way nicer than Catholics. It's a fact. Wow. Wow. I remember I walked into a church. I was in California. I was doing a, sp a speaking engagement for some youth, uh, young Christians, young Christians, uh, more like high school and I think college students were there. And um, and um, 
I walked into the building and this woman walked up to me and she's like, hey, I haven't seen you here before. I'm like, well, um, I'm speaking, blah, blah, blah. Oh, really? Wow, blah, blah, blah. And they were like way more, way more welcoming. And it's amazing. You hear these horrific stories of priests praying on young men, praying on youths, praying on boys, and putting, putting drugs in people's drinks and raping them and horrific stories, right? Absolutely horrific stories. And they say you should go to church. And you have priests who are coming up to you saying, oh, uh, yeah, you should come to Rome. Oh, that's a great idea. Oh, we can share a room together. What? What on earth are you talking about? That's insane. But you should go to church. And if you, if you have an issue with the church, the congregants go against you. The congregants go against you when you have an issue with the priest. They go against you. It's sickening, guys. And the Catholic Church functions so much like a cult. It functions very much like a cult. It's horrible. It really is horrible. And it's like, how do I... How do I... What's the word? How do I reignite that zeal that I once had? How do I reignite it? Because I had that when I, before I became Catholic, I had this zeal. I read the Bible, I prayed, I, and then I became a Catholic, and I still had that zeal, and I prayed, and I did this, and and then after being preyed upon by several different priests, it was so crazy. And I know that every time I tell this story, I know there are people out there who who are, I know there are probably people out there who think that I'm making it up, but it's just it's a hundred percent true. Everything I said is everything I say about this. Every every part of this story that I have said to you guys is true. I'm not making anything up. And here I am in limbo. I am in religious limbo. That's what's been happening. And maybe you guys don't know. Maybe you guys don't know what happened. But what happened was in 2013, I became a Catholic. And then in that same year, some priest, Father Kinsel, asked me to come to Rome. He said he would give a tour for me in Italy. It'll be great. He'll introduce me to Catholics. And I thought it was great. I thought it was a great idea. And then he asked me if I could share a room with him. He asks, uh, he tells me all this crazy shit about homosexuality, like really disgusting things on the phone. And I'm like, what the hell is this guy talking about? And then I saw how the diocese of Austin did Jack diddly shit about it. And then there was another priest that I met, Father Yarbrough. He invited me over uh, to, to to talk with him. And then I looked his name up. I found out that he had sexually assaulted a young man after asking that man to come and talk to him in his office. And I exposed that guy. And the church went against me. You know, it's just so crazy. And, and before that, I was going to a church um, ran by a priest named Father Christopher Phillips. And it was it was um, later found out that Christopher Phillips was covering up for a pedophile named uh, Deacon. Uh, I think his name is Deacon Robert Orr. Orr was a pedophile, and uh, not too long after, or around the time that it was uh, that it was fully realized that this was the case, uh, Robert Orr was found dead, and they never they never told the public how he died. He was a pedophile. They find him dead. The obituary says he's dead, but they don't give you the, the, the way of death. They don't tell you the cause of death. And, and the Diocese of San Antonio says, oh, it turns out that Mr. Orr was a pedophile. Well, how did he die? We don't know. Did he shoot himself? Did the Catholic Church kill him because he had a lot of shit? He had a lot of dirt on people? I don't know. It's insane, guys. This is insane that this has been happening. And Christopher Phillips was covering up for him for years. And he was, and I remember going to his church, and Phillips would go on and on and on about his school, school. We have to fund the school. We have to get the Catholic children a Catholic education. But the young boys in that school were avoiding Deacon Orr. Why were they avoiding him? Any class that Deacon Orr taught, the young boys didn't want to be in that classroom because they knew he was a predator. And the parents were begging Christopher Phillips to do something about it. And Christopher Phillips didn't do shit about it. I went to Italy. I saw some crazy shit over there. Some gay uh, monk uh, 
asked me to dance with him, did a disgusting biting gesture towards my hand. I was having dinner and the monk was, was, was sitting next to me and the monk was like, ah, with a, like Hannibal Lecter, you know, biting. Uh, he, he, he did this biting gesture very close to my hand. It was so creepy. Very bizarre. The mother superior was into the occult. I mean, it was very, very bizarre. Extremely bizarre. She said, she told us, oh, one of my closest friends is a Kabbalist master and he's a saint. And she talked about how she believed that that God has feminine and masculine energies. Um, and then in the church that she was in, the monastery that she was in, in San Marino in Italy, there was like weird erotic artwork on the walls. I mean, it was so bizarre, like very bizarre. Naked men on the walls and creepy shit. Absolutely creepy shit, guys. Very creepy stuff. Um... So I've seen, you know, firsthand how the, how corrupt the Catholic Church, the Roman Catholic Church is. So it's like right now I'm in limbo. I am just in limbo. You know what I mean? I'm in limbo. So I'm trying right now, I'm working to reignite that relationship with God that I used to have. I'm trying, I'm working on it, you know, really working on it. Because I really need that. It's heartbreaking. You know, it really is heartbreaking to see how fucked up everything is.